Good morning, my students. I am your teacher, Mrs. Utenogon Ibuda. I'm taking you on English language today. Our topic for today is composition writing, and it's going to be mainly a revision session. You had been taught this already when school was on. So just to keep you updated of something so that you don't forget before you come back from school, so we have decided to bring a revision session to you on this special classroom. Now, I said I don't want my we are so it doesn't affect the composition writing. You were taught that no, I'm not talking to I'm not talking to you that you have the narrative. Stop there. You have the narrative composition. It's muted. Am I on mute? You have the descriptive composition. You have the expository composition. You have the argumentative. Composition. You also have another type of composition, uh, sorry, another type of composition, which is the formal and informal letters. You also have an article. Now, letter writing is also a type of composition, and you also have articles. Now, for you to write a narrative, we all know that a narrative is about storytelling. You may be asked to narrate an event that happened which you witnessed or an event which you were told. For example, if you had witnessed a fight and you're called by the police to give an account of what happened, you should be able to tell the story. Now, for you to be able to write a narrative or to narrate whatever happened, you should be a very good observer. Pay attention to details. And we have for the descriptive, the descriptive composition is mainly about writing on a particular subject matter, telling the person what it is all about. Example, we have topics such as examination malpractice, corruption in Nigeria. Now, what you are expected to do is that you write to tell your reader what this subject matter is all about. How does it affect the society? How does it affect the individual itself? So that is what expository composition is. Then we have the descriptive. As the name implies, it means describing some event, some subject matters. Example, you may be asked to describe a building. You may be asked to describe an event. Maybe your, uh, your, your, your festival that you have in your village. So you should be able to describe you can also describe persons. And in being able to describe, you must pay detailed attention to whatever you want to describe. You can be asked to describe your church building. Now, you should know things about your church and other things. Now, we also have the argumentative composition. As the name implies, it means Arguing, you argue out your point so that whoever you are arguing with would be able to come to agreement with what you are arguing about. So that is for argumentative. And for the argumentative composition, we have usually have two sides. Either you argue for or you argue against. Now, for you to argue for, we call that side the proposing side. And if you are arguing against, we call that one the opposing side. 
And before you argue, before you pick, you chose the part on the, the, the part on which to argue on, either for or against. Make sure that you have enough information that will be able to persuade your listener or your reader to accept your point of view. We also have letters. For letters, you know that later is a written communication that is written and either sent to the receiver in an envelope or via mail using electronic devices. And for letters, you have two kinds of letters, two types of letters. You have the formal and the informal letter. Now the formal letter is a business letter or an official letter which you write to people in high positions, people holding offices. Example, you can write to the director of a company, you can write to a manager, you can write to the, to the head of an institution like the principal, the vice principal, you can write to political or government leaders, whatever or whoever you want to address it, who is holding an office, that is for the formal letter. Then you have the informal letter. The informal letter is a letter written to close individuals, relatives, friends, and acquaintances. And in writing the informal letter, you make use of your everyday language that you use in communication with your friends. You won't really sound official. Then we have articles. Now, articles, are write-ups that are meant to be published either in magazines or in newspapers. Examples of article uh, topics are examination malpractice, drug abuse, corruption in Nigeria, and so many others. So those are articles. And in writing an article, the format is different from the way narrative and descriptive and other kinds of compositions are being written. Now, you know that writing is a very important aspect in your junior YH. So there are things that your examiner would assess you on when writing. And those things will be taken into consideration in order to award you marks. Failure to adhere to these elements or to these rules in writing, you would score lesser, which would you know that's what that would mean, meaning that if you fail. Now, you have number one, what your teacher or what your assessor would take into consideration would be one, the contents. You have the contents, you have the expression. You have mechanical accuracy. Now, we start with content. Content here means the subject matter you are expected or you are told. To, to write about. Example, you may be given a topic like write a letter to your friend telling her what you like about your new school. Now, in doing that with this topic, what you do is that you tell your friend what you love about your new school. That is the content now. We are talking about the content. You should make sure that you adhere strictly to the information given. Now, under the content, telling about the subject matter, you should be able to write comprehensively it should be a writing that should be lengthy, not short. 
If you are asked to write a letter to your friend telling her what the things you like about your new school, you should be able to list the things you like about your new school and then adhere to that instruction. Not going to tell your friend how you enjoyed the last holiday, the places you visited, or how your uncle visited you at home, how you travel to places and so on. If you do that, you won't be writing out of content and that would amount you to scoring zero. We now have the expression. The expression here means how you are able to express yourself using correct English language. You know, in writing, you would have, you should vary your sentences using the long and the short sentences and make good use of your figurative expressions, such as the simile, the metaphor, you also have the personification, depending on the type of, depending on the type of composition you're writing. If you're writing especially a descriptive or a narrative composition, you should be able to make use of your figurative expressions appropriately. Now, we have mechanical accuracy. Remember that in your writing, your teacher marks, whenever your teacher marks your writing or your writer, you find out that there are circles, there's errors are being circled and being crossed, sorry, or being underlined. Now, for you to maintain mechanical accuracy, you must spell your words correctly. You must minimize errors in spelling. And then the use of first person pronouns, where you use the small letter I. This is wrong. If you use the small letter I for personal pronouns, you would be marked wrong. No matter where it appears, whether it's at the beginning of the sentence or at the middle or at the end of the sentence, of any sentence you're writing, it should always be in capital letters. And also, you have abbreviation errors. Maybe if you were supposed to write this, B E C E, and then you, sorry, B E C E, and then you write this. This would be marked wrong. This one is the correct writing, the correct abbreviation. Or you want to write Y A. You want to abbreviate Y A, and then you abbreviate it using the dot. The one with the dot is considered wrong. So the one without dot is considered to be correct. So you must adhere to that. Then also. You have the organization. Organization here means how you're able to arrange your work. Now, you know that in writing, that you have so many ideas which you would bring into different paragraphs. And each idea that is being developed needs to come in a fresh paragraph. Now, in organization here, you bring all your details, all the things you want to write, all the ideas under new paragraphs. And you should be able to write coherently in a way that your reader would flow along with you. And the story flows in a sequence from the introduction, taking cognizance of your introduction, the body of your writing, and the conclusion. Now, you should be able to start your writing with the introduction in such a way that maybe if you're asked to write about your visit or your stay at home during the lockdown or the quarantine period, 
you should be able to tell somebody where school, how you left school, how the school closed and you wrote the exams and left and you were at home, and other things that you did up till this period. Here are the, what were the things you did? Were there any activities you got yourself involved in? Did you visit some people? What are the academic activities you were involved? So you should be able to write that. Or maybe you're writing about your first day at school. You should be able to narrate how you left home. Were you taken to the school by your parents or you went to the school on your own by yourself? Now, when we got to the school premises, whom did you meet at the gate? What were the things you saw? You should be able to describe that and explain all of that. When you got to the either principal's office or to the reception venue, who were the people who welcomed you? You should be able to write that. And then you paid some things, you were checked in, and you were shown to your class. Not for you to go and write that, oh, it was break time. Okay, during break, I went out with my friends, and after school dismissed, I went to the dormitory, we went to the refectory, and we ate. So you should be able to tell us all the things that happened in, the, in an order, in a chronological order. That is what we mean by organization. Please, I want you to ask me any question you have. Do you understand? What I mean by content, is there anything you do not understand? And in expression, if you do not understand anything, if, if there's something you do not understand and you wish more explanation to be given, please, I am listening. You can speak over your device and I'll hear you from here. Yes, I'm listening. You with a pen in your mouth. You're smiling. Ask me questions. You do not have any questions. Now, the girl, you plated your hair. Ask me questions. Is there anything you do not understand? It's okay. Now, let's go. Let me take the different types of composition. Let me take a formal letter because you would be asked to write either a letter that is official or an informal letter. First of all, for letter writing, you have different Let's consider formal letters first. You know that a formal letter is an official letter. Now, we have, first of all, the address. You have your address. You have your address, that is the writer's address. Then the receiver's address. You have the title. You have the body of the letter. And then you have the closure. Now, for formal letters, you have, sorry, for writer's address, you know that the writer's address is usually written 
are the top right hand side of the paper. And the pattern which we use is mainly the block pattern of writing. Example, if you want to write your address now, Methodist Girls Secondary School. Methodist Girls Secondary School. Utsu Ikwe P.O. Box Then followed by your date Today's date is Today's first July 2020. Now, this is your writer's address. Then you also have the receiver's address. Remember that your receiver, this is the former letter, has an office. It's holding an office. So you address him by the office he is holding. If, for example, he's the manager or the principal of your school, let's use now the principal. Immediately after your address on the right-hand side of the paper comes your receiver's address on the left-hand side below your own address. Now you have the principal. The principal, Methodist Girls Methodist Girls Secondary School to equate in court and present now after after your receiver's address comes the salutation the salutation is either dear sir or dear mother. Dear sir or dear mother. Followed by the title of your letter. What are you writing for? Are you writing to seek permission to be absent from school? Or you're writing to report a case of bullying to the principal? Then you write maybe dear ma, a report on bullying in the hostel. You should be able to write the title. And then you have the body of the letter. The body of the letter is where your main reason for writing comes in. That is where you develop your ideas well to tell whoever you're writing to what you're writing about. And sorry, I omitted something. The reason why you have the title of the letter is to give your reader a clear view or just to prime the person, the person will know at a glance what you're writing about. Then comes the body of the letter. After that comes the closure. Now, the acceptable format for closure is yours faithfully. Yours faithfully. You have yours faithfully followed by your name. Yours faithfully, sorry, followed by your signature. After the signature comes your full name. So, if you follow that format, you will have written a good formal letter. 
please, I'm listening. I need questions from you. Questions, please. Now, you're welcome to this platform. Please, you also inform your other students to join so that they can also learn. The time for this virtual classroom is Mondays and Wednesday for the junior secondary. We start by 9.30 a.m. 9 a.m., sorry, 9 a.m., that is when English language or English study start for the junior secondary. Mondays and Wednesdays are for junior secondary. Then Tuesdays and Thursdays are for senior secondary. Tuesdays and Thursdays for senior secondary from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Thank you for joining. So wait for the next class because the mathematics teacher will soon come over. So my students, you're expected to keep revising your work, keep reading, because the time is short. You see, we do not have time again. When school resumes, I think we'll just rush over some things. So you will do yourself good by studying while at home. Thank you very much. <laughs>